Well, hear the name Lana Duke, and you'll likely think of that husky voice behind Ruth's Chris Steakhouse saying, Come hungry, darling. A phrase, Lana Duke, I understand you trademarked. Is that right? Yes, uh, we did many, many years ago uh, when Ruth was alive. All her commercials ended with Come Hungry. And after Ruth passed and I decided to do my own commercials, because I have been saying darling from the time I arrived in New Orleans, and I uh, can't believe I do, but it just is natural for me to say, come hungry, darling. <laughs> and it's fabulous. Now, you were in advertising. That's how you met Ruth Fertel, the, the founder. So with the newest location now in Markham, explain to us all how a young Canadian girl left home at 18 and helped develop the single mom's restaurant into the what is now an international red meat powerhouse. I left home at 18, and uh, I was living with three girls in Toronto, and we all decided one night, let's travel. And one of the girls wanted to be a stewardess, and I said, Julie, if you want to be a stewardess, anybody would hire you. She didn't have the same self-confidence that I seemed to have for her. And they hired her immediately, and I said, wherever Julie's based, let's that be the first place that we'll travel to. Well, she, Julie was based in New Orleans. And I'll never forget on the phone when she called me, because three months later, she was very sophisticated, you understand. She was trained in Miami. And she said, um, Lana, guess where I've been based? And I said, where? And she said, New Orleans. And I said, New Orleans. She said, yeah, it's in Louisiana. And I said, Louisiana, where is that, Julie? <laughs> and she said, look it up in National Geographic. I'll never forget that, you know. So, uh, but anyway, I uh, came to New Orleans, and I felt so much at home. I love the people there, uh, the openness. Uh, I think that's where the darling came from, because one time I was calling the operator, and the operator said, uh, one moment, please, darling. And I thought, oh, my goodness, she doesn't even know me. But now in my heart, I understand that everybody's a darling unless they prove otherwise. So um, anyway, I fell in love with New Orleans. But in my heart of hearts, I, um, I found um, advertising, and I loved it, absolutely loved it. Couldn't wait to get up in the morning and didn't want to go to bed at night. And I had a tremendous to-do list every day. And finally, one day, I said, I want to open my own advertising agency. And I wrote the 10 accounts that I wanted the most. And one of them was Chris Steakhouse, only because I used to go to Weight Watchers and um, lose my two pounds, and we'd all go celebrate at Chris Steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> the treat meal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I thought it was the most amazing product, OK? And so I acquired the account in 1975, and uh, she had two restaurants at that time. And I helped her, along with many other great people, to grow the brand worldwide. And one day after about 15 years, after we were having double-digit growth, year after year after year, I had the courage to ask her if I could have a franchise. And she said, if I gave you one, where would you go? And I said, I really would love to bring this back home to Toronto. And so at the time, though, rent in Toronto was around $85 a square foot back in 1988, which was outrageous. And she said, Lana, I, I, yeah, I no, I know. <laughs> she said, Lana, I can't do that. Otherwise, you, the landlord will be the only person making any money. So she made me transfer my franchise. So we had one in Austin and Dallas and Houston. We didn't have one in San Antonio. So I did my homework, did a master plan, and we opened San Antonio in 1993. But I kept Toronto in my heart and finally found a location in 1995 and opened in Toronto in 1995. Well, back then, it, I would imagine that it would be hard to break into the, what is the Canadian traditional, I guess, Alberta beef market, and you're offering USDA Prime. Was it... How difficult was it to change people's opinions? At that time, it was very difficult. When we opened in uh, 1995, I remember doing interviews from Vancouver to Nova Scotia to you name it. Why are we serving USD prime beef? And I tried to explain that at that point we had 40-something locations, 48 locations, and people came from around the world, from Hong Kong to Miami to St. Louis or whatever, and they expected the taste of the beef to be exactly the same wherever they went. Right. So we, you know, you just, it was the, the brand itself. Um, a lot of Canadian people didn't understand that. But in, in time, it's like anything, as Ruth would say, give people the very best and they'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. 
and we did. And um, even in Calgary and in Edmonton, we have Ruth's Chris's now, and they do extremely well. <laughs> so why um, specifically? This is your third Canadian lo- third location? Canadian location, yes. So why did you choose Markham? I'll tell you why. Um, my son deserves a tremendous amount of credit for choosing Markham, but I have been in many, many meetings where they said that Markham was the up-and-coming place, and we felt like... By going to Markham, we would broaden our brand. Uh, It's a a great market for Roos Chris Steakhouse Mm -hmm. in this area. Uh, I think it's going to grow phenomenally in the next few years, and we want to really be part of it. And um, David, uh, my son, is very, very excited and has uh, met a tremendous number of people in this area Mm -hmm. that have written me and said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, you're also, and I want to hear about this, a co-owner of the Palace Truck Stop and Casino in New Orleans? Yes, the Palace Truck Stop, where we treat you like royalty, um, that keeps me very humble, okay? Okay. Uh, And, uh, you know, it's a 15-acre property, and we sell diesel, and we have uh, video poker, and we have uh, convenience shops and break stations, and you name it. I've learned more about a truck stop than I ever wanted to know. (laughs) I went in it as an investment and wound up being an owner, but uh, it keeps me humble, and it's fun, and it keeps me mentally challenged. That's important, isn't it? Yeah. I love, uh, I love um, problem solving. Mm-hmm. And I get a big kick out of watching other people grow and to see them really shine. Uh, and so many of my staff I've seen for like the last 25 years and to see them just keep growing and growing and growing and, and um, contributing so greatly to my success. Well, it's amazing how many people I think don't buy into the adage that a rising tide lifts all boats but if you help people you do get it back well I'm first of all I'm such a believer and be honest about what you don't know mm-hmm. and uh, people will help you whenever you say I really need help 99.9 percent of people um, help you I have a an o- OFC club in New Orleans it's the old farts club <laughs> and it's um, it's marketing and advertising people from all over um, Louisiana and they were all my competitors okay at one time and you know we would just shake hands and hello how are you and how's business it was always great whether it was or not you mm-hmm. know it was always great but it's amazing getting to know them like I have got to know them in the last 10 years and you know we're all the same we all just want to make a good living do the right thing for our family um, uh, live a, a pretty good life if we can and help one another Exactly. Well, I, I wonder if you um, you would share a few of your ten tips for success in this crazy business because I know that you 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 speak to professional and business groups, but your um, you you have five P's of marketing: product, price, people, place, and promotion. Yes. But what would you say are, are are you know the top few of your top ten tips on how to develop? One of the things I always think about when you have a problem in business and you're analyzing those five P's, um, think big. Think really big. And don't think money. Just think, what could we do to solve the problem? What can we do to increase business? And you don't think money. You just put it all down Mm -hmm. of what we can do. Because you can always scale back. But if you don't put it down, what is the best solution, then you'll never get there. And a lot of times, um, a lot of times a banker will give you that money mm-hmm. if, if it makes sense to him on a master plan. The other thing I think more importantly than anything is people buy people. They don't buy companies. You know, a lot of times we think, well, we, if we were with a bigger company, I'd be able to cut that deal or I would be able to get their business. And I don't think that's true. I think basically people by people. And we almost always give up just when they probably were going to buy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've often had that experience where if you just make one more call or one more letter or one more email, it's amazing how people, the follow-up. The follow up, yeah. And a lot of times we give up, you know. And, um, oh, there's so many. I haven't given that speech in a while, Lana's 10 tips, but... Uh, I guess my biggest tip is come celebrate all your wins at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. (laughs) You know, it's amazing how back 30, 40 years ago, um, if I would pick up the phone and call a potential client and say, um, I would love for you to join me at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse for lunch. I'd like to talk to you about Mm -hmm. my business. 
how almost everyone said, I'll meet you. (laughs) (laughs) Gee, I wonder why. (laughs) So it was really worth the investment through the years, you know. Yeah, you had uh, all kinds of plans in motion back then. So finally one day I said, gee, maybe I should own one of these restaurants because, you know, it's so good. And look at you now, well, for a former girl from St. Catharines, congratulations on everything that you've achieved in your life. And uh, thanks for coming to Markham. It looks great here. Thank you so much. And let me not ever forget the lady that really, uh, Ruth Fertel, we have 155 Ruth Chris's mm-hmm. now throughout the world, how many people she's touched and, and uh, how amazing she was. And thanks to her that I am where I am today. So it was lovely to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, she said she's magical, mystical, or a powerful wonder girl.